there. And well, most probably they're following us for some reasons, just to keep an eye on our activity. So nothing else to follow. Yeah, we have stopped, and then apparently they are making rounds, you know, around us. And yeah, we're just gonna keep observing cool. and see how it goes. We're in the middle of nowhere. So, that's our job. Let people know what's going on, give people the choice to change things if they want to change things. If they don't know about it, then they're not going to change it. Strong sunshine, when you're in a boat, it's really, really good. Right. So now we're getting closer. For the next 20 minutes, we're gonna be at three nautical miles, so then we're gonna broadcast our message. For us, it's a paradox decision to start использовать открывающиеся от льдов территории для того, чтобы добывать еще больше углеводородов, потому что именно благодаря им мы оказались вот в этом тупике да, климатических изменений. На приеме перезонные. Доброе утро, с вами говорит Арктик Санрайз, я координатор арктической программы, зовут меня Евгения Великова. Гринпис считает, что таяние арктических льдов – это тревожный сигнал для всех и вовсе не сигнал для начала промышленного освоения шельфа. И мы требуем от нефтяных компаний, от «Газпрома» и от «Шелл» отказаться от добычи нефти на арктическом шельфе. Потому что это грозит арктической природе полным уничтожением и представляет опасность для всего человечества. Прием. The big ladders on each side of the platform, if you notice that. I, I haven't had a really good look, but I've had the photographer under special instructions. I'll have a look later. What is that? It's a kind of like like enclosed ladder yeah. leading up, and yeah. there are definitely some wires over to uh, uh, hanging. I needed people who I knew were very committed. I needed people who I knew could withstand the sort of battering, physical and mental. I needed skills, technical skills in climbing and, well, just sheer determination of some of the team members that I knew that they would keep the other team members going. Kumi, he had no climbing skills whatsoever, but what he did have was tenacity and determination and uh, commitment. And he was leading from the front again. The plan was to get on the rig and to occupy it. We're going to launch board approximately at 1.30. The weather conditions very favorable. The wind is easterly, 12 knots. Not much. Swell. Westerly, 0.5 meters only. Going at high speed, I reckon I'm gonna take around 10 minutes. You will start sending people up there. It might be the case that maybe, maybe, it's gonna be a Navy or um, Coast Guard up there. Maybe they will launch their own speedboats and try to chase you. The basic rule, do not get caught. It's way, way better if you're being approached by another boat to just outmaneuver, keep slow, keep outmaneuvering. Try not to just go fast in a straight line because you'll end up having an accident more than likely. We prepared those people to be able to deal with everything we thought we'd possibly come across out there. So it's more like getting a lot of raw action material and sculpting it into some sort of shape. And that shape should be able to encompass any eventuality on the day. If you see that standby vessel fire its water cannons up, you've got to be really, really careful with that. 
they're going to be slow moving and any kind of swell is going to keep them off target a bit. But if they hit your boat, you'll all find yourself about 20 metres from the boat in the water somewhere. Yeah. We always give them the worst case scenario and we do that in time that they can pull out if they decide that it's too much for them to bear. So, after we've been arrested, we've got a right to an interpreter, a right to a solicitor and a right to somebody from your embassy or consul. You can tell them that you'll talk only with your lawyer's presence. So you just say, no comment, no comment, I want to see the lawyer. And then you speak to the lawyer and they'll say to you, just say no comment, probably. If we get deported, it will be back to your own country according to your passport. Your country must pay for this, Russia doesn't pay. If that is not possible immediately, then they take you to a special station named Filtration Camp, where you will be filtered. Sorry, no. <laughs> where you are not in prison, but you cannot leave until you're deported. All of the Arctic exploration, all of the Arctic industrialization that's happening in Russia is kind of behind, is happening behind the scenes. All of the real dirty little secrets, like the, 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 the true amount of oil spills, where you know, the amount of oil that's spilled every year is about as much as Piraz Lomne is supposed to be producing in a year. Right now, when this platform is about to start drilling, in the middle of the Arctic seas, where you're having hurricane strength winds, you have ice moving through it, right? And Piraz Lomne basically has really no oil spill plan to speak of. I mean, they got some, you know, real ridiculous uh, little notes scribbled about, oh yeah, if we have a major spill, well, we got a few shovels and uh, a sledgehammer kind of thing, so we'll be all right. None of that is known to the public. It's very important to get this information out so it becomes part of the public awareness and public discourse. <laughs> the hosing because their position becomes unstable and they may fall 15 meters onto the foot of the platform. So we ask you to stop hosing so we can ascertain the situation of the activists. Over. Arctic Sunrise, Arctic Sunrise, which is the previous law according. We propose you to evacuate uh, all personnel because we will uh, start uh, our uh, water cannons uh, once again. So. Uh, and we think that more people will be injured. Today, the minimum ice level in the Arctic will be measured. It will show that it is the lowest ever recorded in human history. To drill for oil here is utter madness and will drive us closer and closer and faster and faster to climate catastrophe. Inappropriate use of a, a water cannon or a standby vessel is um, it's a weapon. I've seen them breaking reinforced glass windows this thick. It's just really, really a responsible thing to do. Certainly Gazprom was planning to announce in the Russian media as a sort of yet another victory for us, we're opening up the frontier. And uh, I think that's 
very important to point out all the faults and all the failures in order to also drive the debate in Russia about the risks and the dangers of oil drilling in the Arctic and expose what's happening here to global scrutiny. This cry is happening outside of people's eyes, it has been happening outside of people's eyes. And after today, it is no longer as hidden at all. I mean, we were all coming here knowing about this shrinking democratic space. And it is at a time like that when you really need to go in there and protest and show them that you do not just succumb and lie down and accept the authorities telling you of consequences. No, if, you, if something is right, you fight for it. And it's not over yet.